Uh, myself um, and um, Mr. Jeremiah Wilson, uh, we'll switch mask out when uh, <laughs> when it's time. It's been interesting learning how to present in COVID as as, uh, as team team presenting. So let me share my screen. go into present mode and here we go okay okay so um what, what we want to talk about now is is engaging students youth and 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 how you can possibly have internships either get an internship uh, to get experience or um, offer them as a producer so i know this session we've geared it mainly toward those who are getting new into um, uh, farming into small farm uh, production and so we want to like help you make those connections. And, uh, and so I'm going to start off early uh, in the beginning. I'm going to talk a little bit about our uh, partner who helped fund the, uh, the, the component from Langston and helping with the whole program and adding that video uh, component that uh, uh, Meredith talked about. Um, and, and the grant program that we have that will help, help with mentorship and help giving opportunities for students. Then after that, uh, uh, Mr. Jeremiah Wilson, who's our Deputy Associate Extension Administrator, he will he's in charge and in, in, in managing our 4-H and youth development programming. Uh, many of you are familiar with 4-H, some are you, some of you are not, and he would be very happy to share more about that and, and the impact it can have on, 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 on uh, a young person's life. And so, um, and it's not just in agriculture, it's a, it's a, it te really teaches so many things to, to youth. And so um, we, we're, we, as a, in small farm program, we really wanna see that next generation. And I mentioned that in my talk earlier on. Um, and so that's what I'm gonna talk about. But right now we, we I do wanna talk about the uh, United States Department of Agriculture Office of Partnerships and Public Engagement. They help uh, fund this through the 2501 uh, Limited Resource uh, Farmers and Ranchers Program. And so we're using that to reach out to you. And, and a lot of that project or program is to help connect you as producers and those who are wanting to uh, get into uh, farm production and agriculture production, connect you with the USDA services that are out there, whether it's the NRCS, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, whether it's the um, the uh, FSA, the Farm Service Agency, for instance, to access a youth agriculture loan or a uh, mic uh, the uh, micro loan um, that, that FSA provides. And so we also are working to, to and we'll do this in part of our management sustainability component to help you better prepare yourself on your record keeping so that when you do go apply for these USDA loans, you'll be ready and prepared or if there's other opportunities out there. Now, we've, we've had, uh, the other thing we wanna do is, is get out up-to-date information about what's going on uh, with USDA and, and for instance, the recent uh, cold spell that really really made it hard on, on producers, especially market gardeners and, small, and, uh, and producers for the local ag market. Uh, for instance, we know of people that, you know, the pipes froze up, they weren't able to act, or electricity went off. You weren't able to keep the heat going in your greenhouses and you lost everything that you had been preparing uh, and growing in that greenhouse to get to the market, you know, in the next two or three weeks uh, when the prices are high and the demand is high. And so, you know, that, that's a obvious, uh, a huge hit to your production for the year. And so look, uh, look at these uh, resources. You email me, I'll forward this on from the Office of uh, Partnerships and Public Engagement, but here, here's some of the information I just got this morning at 10 a.m. Uh, from their office in the, at the nat in, uh, at national headquarters. So um, you've got links like disaster existence. So if you had a situation where your greenhouse or you lost cattle or such, uh, go to the Disaster Resource Center at USDA. Okay. Um, also, there's also resources for farmers and producers. You can interact with the state outreach coordinators, and then the, you can reach out to Brent Elrod um, at richard.elrod at usda.gov uh, for the Farm and Ranch Stress Assistant Network. So you may have already been hit with pandemic issues and that, how that affected you as far as marketing. Um, but uh, the, here are some resources also for the recent issues with, uh, with uh, 
the cold spell that really affected us. So email me about that, that connection. So um, I already shared this slide earlier, um, uh, working with uh, uh, different youth, exposing them to agriculture. And so I, I wanna just, just emphasize again that we're about exposing youth uh, to these new, uh, new opportunities. Now, I've talked about, okay, helping them see, okay, where their food comes from. Well, now what's the next step? Well, let's say they, they get excited about this, uh, about agriculture, about producing food, about being outside and inter interacting with nature to produce something for their families and produce something for the market. So, but then they come to college and whether our university and whether they're going to Oklahoma State University or Langston University or College of Muskogee Nation, um, they, they want that opportunity or to learn about agriculture and they will, but also they lack a lot of hands-on experience. And so we wanna to try to develop mentorship programs for those type of students. And so we've, we're doing that with this uh, upcoming program, the this small farms program with uh, focus on agripreneurship. It's part of the USDA capacity building grant uh, that we received. And we're, we're, we're trying to develop a unique environment here at Langston University where you can have hands-on experiential learning with appropriate scale equipment, no-till uh, practices, regenerative agriculture, and sound economic principles. So um, part of this not only is the learning environment for our students, but also for um, you as producers. If you're are, you know, not in college, uh, you're not, you're, uh, you know, uh, are in your communities, but you want to really get into farming. Sometimes it, the issue is, is deciding what is the appropriate scale equipment and you want to try it before you even, you know, you don't just want to go and try and get something on the internet. You just watch a YouTube video and that's all. So we're going to, we have equipment. We have opportunities for you to get exposed to different uh, technologies and, and try it hands on and see its application. For instance, a plastic culture machine, um, you know, what is, you know, is that work for me or is that too, too large scale? Do I need something smaller like a hand tractor, for except, for example? Okay. Uh, we're also going to develop a, a agripreneurship incubator where, 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 where students and those that uh, get on, uh, are interested can help, uh, will help them develop agribusiness proposals for small farms and pitch these to a network of potential investors and lenders. So we're gonna look for investors in that who wanna to, want to have an impact on um, youth and new and beginning farmers. And, and there's several opportunities you're gonna have for, um, for this uh, throughout the state to get that training and equipping you need. So for instance, uh, Mr. Mike Anderson already mentioned the uh, the uh, sustainable gardening school we're going to have in Boley, Oklahoma. Okay, that's more in the uh, a little bit more in the eastern central part of the state. Um, we also pay attention in Oklahoma City. They, we have the uh, Oklahoma State University and the Oklahoma County Extension Office. Um, Josh Campbell and Julia Laughlin are putting on a, together with Dr. Lynn Brandenberger and uh, Dr. Beat Sin Hu uh, from OSU, they're putting on a market gardening school, the, the uh, Cooperative Extension Market Gardening School uh, this uh, summer. So look on their website, you'll be able to find that. And if you're in Tulsa, there's also a private entity. I know uh, um, uh, uh, Spicer, he's got a green, green Country Permaculture is putting on a uh, market gardening school program. And so if you want information uh, about how to get involved in those programs, if, um, if you want that experience, then uh, contact us and we'll, we'll get you to the right location. And like I said, with many of these, we're going to offer virtually. And the other thing we're going to have is uh, engaging urban and rural high schools with outreach to recruit new students. And, and we want to find opportunities for that, that internship for them. And so if you do have interest in having somebody you want to give back to that next generation, you need someone who's got strength, who's got energy, maybe doesn't have much of a, a lot of experience, um, then, then reach out to us and we want to try to connect you to a student who is very interested in, in that programming. So just know that these are, these are coming down, these are going to be uh, available this, uh, this year and this growing season. So contact us.
And that, that's one of the things, that's really what we're, we're about. You see this picture here of uh, one of our crop technicians and one of our students working together with a, with a horticulture student from Oklahoma State University and setting up research plots. It's all about how can we make these internship opportunities more accessible. So please work with us, share ideas if you've had good experience with that. And so I, that's that part of it where we we're talking about students being engaged that are already at university or those who are in communities who are graduated from high school. Let's uh, I'm going to pass it now on to um, uh, Mr. Jer uh, Mr. Jeremiah Wilson, and he's going to share and talk about opportunities in 4-H, opportunities in, in partnering in this same area. <clears throat> Hello and good morning, everyone. My name is Jeremiah Wilson. Uh, as he's already stated, I am the associate um, administrator or deputy associate administrator for Extension Services. And the first slide here we have is just a good, this is a good cross uh, representation of uh, people that we have reached out to. Um, this one is taking place in the Tulsa area. Let's see, uh, does the pointer also work so I can describe who's who? Will yes, they see my pointer movement? Oh, yes. So um, of course that's me. And these are two of our associates that also work with Langston in the Tulsa area. This is Ms. Shar Carter and this is Mr. Joshua Davis. And we are here at the Edurec Center and they were having a program where NASA was getting uh, a chance to come in and meet with a few kids. And there were actually, uh, there was actually a real astronaut there. Um, I think he's in behind us somewhere. And these are our different associates, Mr. Charles Harper. Oh, she's also a boy at Langston, that's Eula Green. Um, and these two people, uh, these two folks are the founders of EduRec, uh, as, as well as Mr. Uh, Charles Harper and to Molly, but this is a really good example of cross-pollination of partners and the difference uh, that we can make in different communities. And so from the different pictures, they're kind of around the state. Some are in Oklahoma City, Spencer, uh, here on main campus in different areas like that. Um, so uh, I wanted to talk to you just a little bit, uh, give a quick summary of how to gain partners and stakeholders in your own endeavors. Uh, first is be honest uh, and be outgoing. If you are willing to go out into your community and talk with people, some, not all, but some will listen and they might show up to a meeting or two. Those who will show up to a meeting, I'd say you have probably 30% chance at getting some of those to commit to some of your programming and continuing on with you. Now, what you have to do, um, if you're the person seeking partners and community guidance, you have to show up, you have to deliver. Um, people don't like it when you say you're going to do something and you don't. And that goes for all areas and aspects of your life. <clears throat> um, and I'm not going to get too preachy about that. Um, so I'll move on and I'll show you some of the funner stuff uh, that's happened in our program over, I think these pictures encompass maybe the last year and a half, or uh, we can go back and say two years because some of them are actually from 19, uh, so. Okay, so here, this is one of uh, our club's shining moments. This is our very, very first Farm Safety Implement Training Day. And, um, here you can see Micah, and then this is a group of four agers on uh, private landowners' land that's uh, giving his time and his efforts to the club. And uh, these are a group of kids right here. And I think that's Mr. McHenry, that's Eric right there. He's another uh, employee of the university, he's an ag tech. So here uh, they're learning some basic safety farm and operation for uh, operating a tractor. Here, uh, this is myself along with three other students and they're learning some uh, basic farm safety with um, a riding lawnmower or some people would say a small tractor. Uh, and they are very similar and I'm glad we had them there at the same day so the youth could understand and get somewhat of an idea as to how these, uh, uh, crossover. And then here, 
um, I believe this is the same day. We also have uh, another uh, youth uh, learning what a tiller is and how to use a tiller. And now this young man right here, uh, really one of my favorites that I got to work with. He loves getting his hands dirty. He loves being out in the garden. Uh, he loves planting. And he's even gotten his little brother and younger sister into the club and also to do it. And this young lady right here, uh, she loves driving. And so we found out that she likes operating tractors. Uh, she loves operating lawnmowers, riding lawnmowers, and she wants to be a pilot. So um, yeah, we got a lot of interesting kids. And I think the name of this group was For the Hard Way. So there's an old 70s movies reference out there that some of you will get. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, so we always talk about being of service in our community. So if you don't know the motto of 4-H, it's from your uh, head, heart, hands, and health. And um, we pledge those to basically be in service for our communities, our families, and make, um, you know, the world a better place. And uh, the overall writing objective in 4-H is uh, to positively influence youth towards a um, uh, learning environment of built with positivity and uh, giving a bit of overall education in agricultural techniques and things like that. It's just a brief overstatement um, of what we do. But here, I think this one is, this is actually here at Langston's uh, City Hall. And I think this was for MLK Day in 20, I believe. And the group of students that you're seeing here are actually painting the floors and uh, cleaning out some of the offices at Langston City Hall. And then this one here was also a day of service. Uh, this one is at Edgerac in Tulsa. And this one was, a, I think, a backpack giveaway. Um, and, oh, I can't remember what else they did. but. Basically, they were, it was a back to school event where the kids came and uh, received different um, donations from different groups. And this same group uh, came out and helped make sure that everything ran smoothly. And so this is kind of some of the stuff you do, uh, which are different groups of service. And this, again, the name of this group was For the Hard Way. And then I think the next one will be some different uh, characters mixed in there. Yeah, so uh, I've been working very diligently to start up a shooting sports uh, program for Langston University for the last two years. And what you see here on the left, uh, in the left photo, is um, this is Mr. Eric McHenry. He's, he's an employee here, uh, one of the ag technicians. Uh, this is one of our trainers uh, for, the, for the shooting sports program, myself. Another trainer hidden back there. And then these three are actual, uh, actual LU students. Now, I believe, uh, did he graduate? Anyway, I think one of them have already graduated out, but they still qualify as full-time volunteers for 4-H. And so if they're here, they will definitely come and help with the clubs. And um, I can't see, but I think these three got their certifications in archery. I have mine in archery as well, and uh, and small uh, 22 pistol, 22 rifle, and air pistol, air rifle. And Mr. McHenry has his in air rifle, air pistol, 22 pistol, and 22 rifle. Um, and uh, yeah, so we do have our people trained and uh, ready to do the classes. And uh, we do have a group of uh, youth and their families who are more than happy to participate, willing to participate. So I, I, um, I predict this will be one of our more popular programs. Hmm. Um, oh, so these, these get kind of mixed up out of order. But as you, as you see, some of the same faces in here, some of the same kids, some of the same uh, parents, 
but you know, the groups, they always change. And I think this was that groups, maybe second meeting. Uh, yes, because uh, I know that because this woman here, she no longer lives here. She's in Washington, DC, her and her husband had moved, but they didn't even have kids in this group. And they loved what we were doing so much. They came and just wanted to be a part of the group. So, you know, this is the kind of enthusiasm that we can get in our local groups. And then of course that handsome devil right there is me again. Uh, so another thing we've worked out with uh, some of our groups is uh, we have different groups who are good in different areas. And so we always encourage kids to go into their field that they like. Uh, this group was art. They, uh, they really had a strong love of music. And so they actually wrote some lyrics to a rap song. And we actually had uh, students from the university volunteer do the production of the music for them, uh, record it for them. And here they are shooting a video in our studios here on main campus. I'm just gonna show you the question so you can see some of the questions okay. when we get ready. Okay. This is the last slide, so. Okay, this is the last slide? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, so answer there. any questions. Answer your questions. So any questions? Uh, right this, oh, okay, the early good less safety training. Okay, well, thank you for the comment about the safety training. Uh, let's see. 4 leader and shooting sports coach right here. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'll probably be calling you to uh, help out with some of the club stuff uh, <laughs> if you're interested. Uh, let's see, how do we enroll our children in 4-H programs? Oh, great. So uh, first step is contacting me. Uh, my email is down here. And what we'll also have going on is uh, now we, we're doing the online system. So it's called 4-H Online. If you just want to look and get to know, you can definitely go to uh, 4-H Oklahoma or 4-H Online. And uh, it's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I always love to do trainings with my groups of people. And uh, the first few clubs that I've had, we go to an auditorium similar to this and we walk everybody through it at the same pace, same time. Um, so that, but yeah, that's it. It's, it's all online now. Uh, we used to be able to do the, um, the paper uh, clubs, but now they're the, at the national level and at state level, they're kind of pushing everybody more onto the uh, online platforms. Um, let's see. Do they choose links to me? Oh, yes, uh, yes, you, you do choose Langston. Um, and that's the reason why we asked you to contact us because if you put in whatever county you live in, it will go through OSU as default. Um, but if you want to be with a Langston club, then please contact us and we will link you up with someone in your area to try and get you into a club. And then sometimes it turns out because we are a small institution, we may not have somebody in that area. And if you want to travel, uh, then you can come to another area where we have a club, or we will definitely put you in, char uh, in touch with someone from OSU. Start a new club. Or start a new club. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, am I, is my time up? Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Uh, let me recommend for information on internships. That uh, internship information would be myself, uh, Dr. Ringer, and who else? Who else? Yeah, that'd, that'd be the main one. The, yeah, those would be the main one. And Okay. Uh, oh, okay. My time is up now. And so. Dr. Ring has last. Oh, right. thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate it, uh, Jer Mr. Jeremiah Wilson, for sharing. Uh, he's uh, he's got a lot of experience with 4-H, uh, and so um, we look forward. Contact us about this. Contact myself or uh, Jeremiah about uh, internship opportunities and who we can get you connected with. I think uh, we definitely want to, uh, we've really enjoyed this opportunity to work with ONI and ODAF uh, to share uh, some of the, the programming that we have and to partner together. And we're really excited about this year. So um, 
Some of you, you know, we've been in, in, in contact uh, and, and we want to follow up. Sometimes it's been a little lagging because of uh, staffing issues, but we're, we're getting caught up with that. And we're really excited for this, this year's growing season and what we, how we can interact you, with you uh, throughout the year. So do not hesitate to contact us. We will get you contacted back. And uh, I just want to thank all of our satellite locations before I pass it back to Meredith uh, and Muskogee and Wagner and Tahlequah and also Miss Eula Green, who is one of our extension educators with her group up in North Tulsa. And so uh, I appreciate it. We, we want you to be part, we want to be partners with you. And so uh, I hope to see you tomorrow. And if I don't see you tomorrow, you can see Mr. James Arati, or I, I might be up at a uh, satellite location. So thank you very much, Meredith. Thank you. This was extremely insightful. And we always enjoy hearing what's going on at Langston and how we can get involved and how you guys are supporting our local ag in Oklahoma. So thank you. I wanted